Hey guys, and welcome to another show and tell video from the SOS Gun Show. Uh, yesterday, I posted a video of me walking around the show. I showed you a, a little bit of a clip from the booty I brought back. And by the way, this is not everything. There was a, a few other odds and ends, a lot of accessories and a few rifles. But I want to focus on the pistols today. And I promised you I would go through, and you can see here that I have them laid out on the floor. These are the ones I'm going to go through. Um, uh, most of these are going to be for sale on the site, uh, and things do move quickly because sales have been phenomenal for a whole lot of reasons, but sales have been f phenomenal. What's not going to be included in today's video is a group of SA guns. Actually, there's one NSKK. Uh, here's a group of SA guns that also came in from a collection, um, and I'm going to feature that in a separate video uh, later this week. It's probably going to take me a couple days to put that together. Um, but a lot of people are asking, how do you find all this stuff? And I just want to clarify that 90% um, of the things that I'm showing you, people bring to me. In other words, they know I'm coming to uh, Louisville for the show. Uh, they call ahead of time and say, I'm going to bring you a couple boxes of guns or I'm going to bring you a couple of guns. So we stand at our table and we meet and greet all of you. Um, but people bring us stuff to, to bring back with us. So most of this stuff came to me kind of like a walk-in Wednesday. It walked to our table and we brought it home. I spent very little time actually walking the show looking for things. So one of the reasons people come to Legacy is because we get such a great assortment. In fact, one of the first things I'm going to show you this morning is going to be an epic find of 25 caliber PPKs and one PP. So let's take a look. So here's what's epic. I have uh, 25 calibers. Now, some people say they didn't make them. And, and let me clarify, we're talking about pre-1945. So these are actually the most, I think every one of these is pre-war. So it's actually pre-1940. Every one of these pre-war 25 caliber PPKs and one PP. I, I wanna wait and do the unveiling because we kind of need a drum roll. So I have one, two, three, four 25 caliber PPKs. So you're watching this video and I can promise you nobody else in the world has seen five 25 calibers at one time. So you are one of, of uh, limited audience and thanks for watching. Uh, but this is why you come here. Uh, so by the time we're done, you're going to be an expert on 25 calibers. Now, um, you may never own one. Uh, what's the price of these? Uh, they're going to be somewhere in the 15000 range. I've seen them sell at auction uh, for up to 15000 uh, And certainly years ago, I was selling these for about 12000 So the price is somewhere in that range. Um, you're going to become an expert because I'm going to show you exactly what you need to know about a 25 caliber. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so um, the first pair that I want to show you are consecutively numbered. You can check it out. Uh, you can see this one ends in 046 and the other one ends in 047. One thing unique about a 25 caliber, and again, I don't know that anybody has ever faked them because you would, I guess it, at that price, you could make a new barrel. Uh, it's in 25 caliber and they didn't even have um, a logo for it. And so it's a standard logo, but you can see where it said 7.65. They just cut that part out and they etched in 6.35. And that's normal. That's what they all will look like. And you'll see them. Here's another one. You can tell by the font it was altered, um, but they took away whether it was nine. They did have a nine millimeter logo and they had a 22 logo, but they did not have a uh, 25 caliber logo or 6.35. Now, just to give you some numbers, there's only 38 known PPKs, uh, and we have four of them here, 38 known. Of the PPs, much rarer, only 12 are known. So 12 known PPs in 25 caliber and 38 known PPKs. Um, so all of these, I believe we'll check them, but I believe they're all 90 degree safety, so they're all early. Um, they have a finger extension bottom. I'll show you the magazine because they're unique. Now on the crown end, crown end proof. You know on the 7.65, by the way, that the crown end is here and here. A 22 caliber will have the proof marks here and here. Only the 25 caliber, and as we go through these, you'll see the proof marks are here and here. 
I believe that's without exception, but we'll, you know, we'll go through them together and make sure. Uh, now, the other thing that's unique is the magazine. Let's take a look at the magazine. Okay, so here's what's unique about the magazine, and I see two general styles. I know this one is a factory one, but let me clarify, they never actually made a 25 caliber uh, PPK magazine or PP magazine. What they did, if you look here, they took a Model 8 magazine, see that right here? They took a Model 8 magazine and inserted it into a 7.65 magazine. You can see it better here. This is a regular 7.65 magazine, but inside is a Model 8 magazine. This happens to have an open follower. That was an earlier model. And the holes line up. The way they, the way they did it, they inserted it, the holes line up. Now let's take a quick look just to prove my point. Okay, I'm gonna be Ian uh, from Forgotten Weapons for a while because he's the one that always takes this apart. And so I'm, I pulled the bottom off, okay? Put that aside. And then here's that retaining pin. There is a very small spring that was just cut. That's the regular spring inside, but this is just cut. And then what you see in there, well, you tell me, that is a Walder Banner. <laughs> That's a Model 8 magazine. And so all they did is they fit a Walder, uh, Walder Model 8 in there. And this is done at the factory. The only uh, ones that I know are absolutely uh, made at the factory are the small holes. But uh, the story is then told that they, uh, they only made a small number of these and they ran out of magazines because everybody wanted two. So they went and made up some more. Um, and again, this, this goes in here and then this goes on top of that, and then I just slide the bottom on. But this is the second style. These are the regular holes, and if I take this apart, you'll also see the same thing. A spring, and then a Walder Banner uh, Model 8 magazine that slid inside a PPK magazine. So that is, that's the way they look. And now here's a third one, um, and again, they're all early no-lip. This one has a thin lip, so it was a little bit later, but because these holes don't line up, I'm assuming that uh, somebody put this together post-factory. It might have even been, you know, a, a collector who said, I would like another one. They're not that hard to make. But if you find one that's in uh, where the holes line up in original, especially the small ones, they can easily be twelve to $1,500 just for the magazine. So these are the three styles that I see. The, the ones that I know that are factory, small holes and um, no lip. Then the larger holes, which I believe were made up after the guns uh, because they needed spare and probably factory. And then uh, ones that were just put together by collectors who just took a, a Model 8 and threw it inside uh, a PPK magazine. But it works. Most people are looking for a rig with a spare magazine, so uh, these have been made up more recently. Okay, we saw the uh, two consecutive numbers. This is a third one. You can see on the logo that this was added, etched in. Uh, look at the fire blue. This is probably one of the prettiest ones I have. Uh, and you can see it's also really early. Uh, the others were 780, by the way. This is 778. Again, only 38 known. You can see the proof marks and the 25 caliber and the magazine we've already seen is, is correct. Here's number four, uh, comes as a rig. So uh, now that you're an expert on these, uh, this is gonna be an Aka holster. It's early and we'll pull out the gun. Uh, this is later than the other two. This is in the uh, 87, 879 range. Uh, you can tell that this is a real 25 caliber because of the placement of the crown end. There's the barrel. Front strap is nice. Let's check out the magazine. Uh, this one is nice. They put, um, again, I don't know if that was done at the factory or later. Uh, you can't really tell that that was added later, but it was, um, but they filled in with the white stuff, so it, it, it isn't as noticeable. And this is a correct magazine. It's got the small holes, and there's a magazine within a magazine. So everything is correct about number four. Oh, before I move on, let's take a look at the spare. And the spare. Uh, is the larger holes. So uh, actually this looks like, you know, they line up and probably uh, was done at the factory. This does look all correct, but this has the larger holes, a 25 caliber magazine. Okay, here's the grand finale. Uh, 
uh, one of only 12 known. Uh, this is a nice aqua holster again. Here is the PP. Uh, notice the logo and you can see that that was added. Um, let's see if the, notice the proofs. You guys are getting good at this, aren't you? You actually now know what they should look like. This is in the uh, 776 serial range. So these are all like 1932, 33. Um, they were experiment. These were sold uh, commercially. They were not used for the military or the police, but sold uh, commercially. And evidently, they did not become very popular because, again, they made very few. Um, all of them have the 90 degree safety. All the PPKs had the early 90 degree safety. And so does this. Uh, let's take a look at the map. Oh, there you go. Small holes. And it's a magazine within a magazine. This one will be exactly the same, but the spring, because it's a longer magazine, the spring is just a little bit longer, but you will see the Walder Banner uh, logo on the bottom of the Model 8 magazine. Uh, this is the wrong bottom, though. And let me show you what I think happened. And I'll, I'll fix this before I sell it. This is the magazine that must have come with the gun. It has no lip, and it's early, and it has the small holes. But somebody wanted a spare magazine, and so uh, this is all correct. Uh, they added this. I'll just put a flat bottom on this because the spare should be a flat bottom. Notice if you don't know what I'm talking about. The thick lip is, is a later variation. The no lip is the early variation. So I'll put a flat bottom on this, correct magazine, and then this one will go in the gun, and um, I probably will not offer this for sale just because it's one of 12 and I don't have one, so I feel like this should stay in my collection. Okay, so how cool was that? The next thing I'm gonna cover, it might be even cooler for some of you because they're gonna be SS guns, but the 25 calibers are much more rare and you may never see another one, so thanks for watching. Now, uh, the book. Uh, we had a bunch of subscribers came by, um, and bought the book and took pictures of them and um, you know we had a good chance to chat. But also at the show, I picked up four SS guns. So I'm gonna go over those next. These will be, these were not previously in the book. Uh, they will be added. Uh, actually, I think one of them had already been in the book. But let me go over the SS guns that I picked up. Again, I did not find these at the show. People contacted me ahead of time and said, would you be interested in buying my SS gun? So these were prearranged, they showed up, and actually one was already pre-sold. That's the rarest of them, and I'll show that one next. Um, but here is uh, a nice black holster. It does not have black stitching. Um, as a matter of fact, this is the way it came, but I also picked up this holster, and this is probably more appropriate for an SS gun because it's black, black aqua holster, uh, with black stitching, and there is a name inside. Uh, so I'll have to investigate that a little bit. And um, so this would be more appropriate, and I could probably switch that out. I would put this holster with this gun. But here is um, Walder PP. It's marked. It's the leading edge holster. And here's the gun. Uh, this is actually a beautiful gun. Notice the fire blue and the condition of this finish. Front strap. And I'm saving the worst for last. Beautiful gun, very exciting. And I'm covering it up, but uh, somebody, maybe the vet, put their initials CS. So CS, what an idiot. Um, it's not ruined, but it, it doesn't help the value at all. So um, as you will see in the book, uh, 202 serial range, it is m numbered on the frame and on the slide. Um, which it, it is in the SS range, and we could actually look up the contract number. Uh, and I like the last three digits, 800. And the magazine is also matching. So it has one matching magazine, and it's the number two magazine. And as I said, um, we'll add this to the next time we print. And this will be made available, but I probably will swap uh, the holster for this holster. Uh, just because I believe this is more appropriate. Uh, this is the next SS gun I picked up. Again, this was pre-arranged. Pre this is one of the rarest. The muzzle number RZM is one of the rarest. This is probably even rarer. Well, certainly among the PPs, this is the rarest of the SS guns because it is a P under. It's in the proper range. If you look it up in the book, you'll see 
Uh, actually, I think this one, it, it is recorded in the book. So I already had this one previously recorded and it was previously sold. Now, a lot of you, uh, there's a dozen of you who say, I wanted to pee under and you knew I wanted to pee under. I don't come across them very often, but um, the guy that um, is buying this had prearranged and worked out a deal with me even before the show. Um, and this one does not have a numbered magazine, no numbering on the magazine at all, uh, but it is a proper pee under. I don't know how many still exist, uh, but that number is in the book. I just have to go look it up, but I want to show you more guns. Uh, the final two SS guns will be made available. Um, the condition is not great. Uh, let's do this one first. Uh, this has been refinished. You can tell how the slide is uh, filled in. It's a, it's a nice looking gun. has kind of a dull blue finish. Um, but it is SS, you'll notice numbered here and numbered here, made in about 1940. Um, so it is a proper SS gun and we'll go a little bit cheaper because uh, of it being refinished, but it does have one matching magazine. The last SS gun um, is a K under. And uh, again, just a little bit of spottiness, um, but K-unders are clearly SS guns, like the P-under, except uh, with the PPKs, it's a K-under. <laughs> and there, uh, there are far more of these than the PP, and it comes with a um, non-numbered magazine. So the matching magazine is not there, but it clearly is an SS gun, and we'll be making this one available as well. Okay, uh, real quick, uh, the next two really cool guns is a party member and a party leader. Uh, let me show you. These are not particularly rare. They made 30,000 of them, but you can see the RZM marking there. And it is in the proper sewer range for a RZM, not muzzle numbered, so not SS, but it was sold to a party member in 1934 or 1935 has the proper early magazine. So everything about is this is correct and we will be offering this on the website um, and I'm sure it'll go quickly. But again, this went to a party member. You bought it uh, just like you paid your dues. You could, you could buy a party, um, a party approved PPK in 1934 and 1935 and that was part of your membership privileges. Uh, the other one is a party leader PPK, here you see the holster. Not mint, but I would say very good, if not excellent. But there you see the Aka DRGM marking. You see the spare PPK magazine. Now let's take a look at the, get the money shot is the grip itself. And just a uh, beautiful party leader grip. No crack in the back like you often see. And beautiful party leader grip. Crown End Proof, this was made in 1939. And again, I've mentioned, I've done many videos about the party leader. Serial range is 1939. And these did appear in the party catalog uh, in 1938 and 1939. So um, this would be appropriate. Of course, you could take this grip and put it on any gun, but um, this is probably correct. Uh, came home this way, but it, it certainly would be appropriate to be on this gun. And unlike the party member, this you had to get permission. It was considered an honor weapon. Basically, as an honor weapon, uh, if you pay your dues and you're a good little Nazi, then your, um, your group leader would recommend you to get the gun, and uh, people would buy the gun and with the grip, with the party honor weapon grip on it. Okay, are you having fun yet? Talk about rare calibers. Let me just show you some of the more common calibers. Uh, well, first of all, let's do this one because um, these are just nice 7.65 commercial guns. I'm just double checking to make sure. Yes, this one and this one. Let me show you these up close. So for the common folk, for the rest of us, you and me included, uh, here is a 7.65. You can see it's all part of the logo, unlike this 6.35. Uh, just a beautiful commercial gun and uh, much more aff affordable. However, the prices continue to go up. Uh, that serial number, I think, puts it at about 1936, uh, Fire Blue Safety. And this was the holster that it came in, uh, probably a guy's name there, German, because it has an umlau over the U. Uh, so that's just a really nice commercial gun, as is this one. And again, 7.65 is common cat caliber. There you see the leading edge holster with a spare magazine and you see the 
ACA marking with the DRGM, which is during the Nazi era. And this looks like Larry or Terry Wiener. Oh, I'd love to be an Oscar Mayer Wiener. Steiner, okay. This looks, uh, this is definitely Steiner and it's either Terry or Larry, probably Terry Steiner, uh, maybe the German who owned it. And it does say Walder PP. Let's take a look at the gun. And just another beautiful commercial gun. I'm just wiping these off and look how dirty they get. Um, that's mostly just dried oil. Uh, so here you see the beautiful logo. Oh, I lied. Nine millimeter. So this is a little rarer. Uh, there's a nine millimeter and front strap. Uh, let's see, the serial number is about 1938. Bottom release mag, not the push button, bottom release mag. And you can see on the magazine, it does say nine millimeter. So we have 7.65, we have the nine millimeter. Let me bring these two your way. Check this out. I just, look at the finish on these things. Um, so this is 22 caliber PPK with this extended magazine. They call it the box mag. That's just for the grip. It does not add uh, mag capacity because the magazine still stops right there. This is just a plastic piece hollow inside. So it does not extend the number of, of uh, bullets. Uh, that's good for those of you in California where you're restricted, uh, but it is just more for the cosmetics and the grip. And so there, uh, again, fire blue safety. That, now we have a 60 degree safety. Look how beautiful that is. And remember I talked about the crown end being here and here. And just to confirm, I know what I'm talking about. There's the nine millimeter with the crown end here and here. And the 7.65 is that way as well. Back to the 22 calibers. This is the 22 caliber PP. This is almost a plum finish. It looks really pretty. A little bit of wear on the front strap, but generally a beautiful gun. And uh, you can see the serial number again, takes it to about 1938 and crown proofs here and here. By the way, there is another crown proof on the end of the barrel and you can barely see it, but it is right there. And that, that would be on all the guns. I forgot to check the 25 calibers, but I'm sure they are proofed right there as well. I showed you uh, quite by accident, a nine millimeter PP. Uh, this is not by accident. Here is a nice PPK holster, uh, ACA logo with the DRGM. And this is uh, a nine millimeter PPK. Uh, this has got a little bit of wear here, has a nice fire blue safety. You can see it says nine millimeter. Uh, this is also bottom release. They didn't do the button because it weakened the frame and the nine millimeter was a heavier load and would sometimes cause uh, fractures to the frame. So they made it a bottom release. And this is also marked nine millimeter. Now there's a bunch of you out there who want this gun because I regularly get asked about getting nine millimeter PPKs and they are very, very uh, hard to find. Uh, this serial number is 1938 and you see the crown proofs here and here. Uh, one more I wanted to show you. I, I just wanted to show you this because I think it's really cool. I went to the optometrist yesterday, had my eyes checked and lo and behold, this gun had it for a couple of days um, and you'll notice it's doctor and that's a medical doctor, Hans Noin something. I can't really read the rest of it, but that uh, my understanding is that says optometrist. So he was an eye doctor. Now, I just think it's in, uh, interesting in Nazi Germany um, during the, the reign of the Third Reich, uh, we'll call it. I know people get upset when I say Nazi Germany, uh, but during the Nazi era in Germany, uh, even the eye doctor carried a pistol. <laughs> so he probably was a party member. And um, look at the condition of this gun. Now it is 7.65, beautiful condition. Holy smokes, why the heck would I sell this? It's just beautiful. Look at the front strap. It must be pretty early. I'm just uh, covering the tag because it probably has the name of the person I got it for and everybody wants to remain anonymous. Oh yeah, it is very early. Remember I said the, the, um, the crown end would be here and here. On the earliest guns, they did them here and here. And actually 7.60 uh, is one of the earliest PPKs ever made. 
And also to show, uh, first of all, it would have a enclosed firing pin. We can't see that, but I could show that to you. A 90 degree safety, which is early. The grip screw goes from left to right, left to right, which is only on the early ones. And you see the slab side magazine, as opposed to this one. Uh, the, the, after, after the first year of production, they went to the indented. No idea why, but that was just a design change. You can see this is a solid color and not modeled like this. Uh, these were modeled, meaning brown, brown and black mixed together. Here it's a solid color, which is only found in an early magazine. These early magazines by themselves can be four to $500. Look at the condition of that magazine. So uh, this optometrist did not use his gun very much. And that's a good thing, because when I go to see the optometrist, I don't want an accidental discharge. Okay, I feel like I'm running out of time. Uh, I, the last thing in the world I wanna do is bore you guys, so I'd rather cut it off early and have you scream for more. There's so many more guns I wanna show you, but I'm just gonna show you a couple uh, special uh, guns. Uh, first is the DRP. Now, I did a whole video on the DRP. Uh, there's a link uh, below to that video. A DRP is just the, the German uh, postal department, so it's Deutsches Reichs Postal. Um, German Postal Department, and no, the uh, mail carriers did not carry guns, but however, the postal inspectors, so somebody who committed mail fraud or if they're doing an investigation about stolen mail, or if you just don't pay your bills, they'll show up at your door. Uh, there's two variations, let me show you, because I got one of each. It's kind of cool. They do come in separate serial ranges, and they do come in a solid block. When I get around to doing the book on special contracts, uh, this is the earliest variation, so 908. The DRP has periods, D period, R period, P period. So that's the earlier variation. And the other variation, and most collectors want one of each, this is a little later, 954. And let's see, the year would be about 1937. And DRP with no periods, so it's... You know, uh, when I first started collecting and I had one with the periods, somebody brought this by my table and I said, up, oh, this one's fake because it doesn't have the periods. Whoever did it forgot to put the periods. Well, I since learned a lot. And so they have a whole block with the period, mit and mit uns. <laughs> I don't know if that, with or without onions, um, one of each. Okay, and the last one I'm going to show you, again, I don't want to bore you. It's in the correct zero range, and it is uh, eagle end. You can tell by the finish, it's a nice high polished finish. This is from about 1940, maybe 1941. Uh, later in 41, the, the high polish began to, to dull down a little bit. So uh, eagle end started in 1940. Uh, high polish, it's still in 1940. Uh, but this contract is the Eagle 359, not the Waffen Eagle 359. Here's a picture of the Waffen Eagle versus the earliest variation, which is just the Eagle 359. I wanted to show you this one because it's just a beautiful example. They did not number the early uh, magazines, uh, and it's presumed that this is not a Luftwaffe contract. If it has uh, the numbered magazine, then it would be a Luftwaffe contract. And as a matter of fact, I showed you this gun in the last video. There's the Waffen proof, uh, kind of verifying. It's actually it's a little bit sloppy, but it's an Eagle uh, WAA359. And this has matching number magazine to the gun numbered here and here. And then, of course, numbered at the bottom of the magazine, indicating that this is a Luftwaffe contract and this is just an early Army contract. And speaking of Army contracts, I picked this up at the, actually, Kurt, uh, one of our, uh, he, he uh, does all our accessories. Kurt picked this up, which is a pendant. I could say pendant and somebody else said pennant. So somebody will correct me. A pendant that would go on your car, and look at that, you just screw it in. I think if you guys bought this and screwed this into your aerial, I don't even know if cars come with aerials anymore, and then just hung that up, I think it would make a, uh, a real impression in your neighborhood. So we'll be offering this, not with a gun, just by itself. You, oh, you can see the plastic. So it had a plastic coating, which kind of the sunlight would crack it and uh, break it off. And you see the same thing on the other side, but I, I assume the, uh, the sunlight kind of deteriorated the quality. This is just a, 
a cool little accessory that we picked up at the gun show. Okay, that's enough for today. I've got some small caliber rigs I wanna show you and I got some SA rigs out there. So I'm gonna actually get three videos just out of the SOS show, four, including the walk around. So make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned because I'm gonna be doing more real soon.